This is just a quick video and really it's a follow-up to part 6 in this series of videos in which I'm repairing a DEC 11-34A vintage computer. In part 6 of this series I went over the power supply regulator modules um, but I didn't show them uh, running on the bench, I just um, showed a, a minor modification, cleaned them and uh, just described how they fit into the main chassis. Um, but um, there was a question on that uh, video that uh, made me decide to post this video and the question was can these easily be tested on the bench and the answer is yes they can be tested extremely easily and in fact um, they're so easy to test on the bench that it's always wise doing that whenever you take them out. Now they expect to be fed with AC directly from the transformer so although these are switching power supplies and this particular one is the H7441 which incidentally is completely different from the H744. bit confusing but they're very different internally. They're pin out compatible so you can uh, replace one with the other but electronically they're very different internally, completely different schematic. But the input to these um, it's written on the bottom of the unit so if we look at this it's, if you can see this, uh, it says input is um, AC 20 to 30 volts and the output's 5 volts. So these are 5 volt 32 amp regulators. So it expects 20 to 30 volts um, AC going in but you can run them off DC and if you look at the schematic for these, as I said this is different from the 744, um, on the input there is a bridge rectifier and a fuse. So it doesn't actually matter which way around you connect these. Uh, if you are going to fully test these then you should um, test it with the uh, power going in one way and then reverse the power going in and make sure it still works and that will fully test the bridge rectifier so I'll show that in a minute. They're relatively straightforward switching supplies but because they run on low voltage AC rather than mains as uh, many switching supplies do it makes them quite nice and easy to work on and the general um, topology of this is very similar to the uh, general mainstream switching supplies at the time so it's quite easy to work on. So to hook it up all you need to do and in fact uh, a quick glance at the diagram you can see it's pins 6 and 7 are the uh, inputs we're going to feed DC into that from our 01 ODP 6062 supply and then we're going to look at the output from pins 1 uh, and in this case I've got it to pin 8. Uh, we're going to run it to fairly high current. I'm not going to go up to the full 32 amps. Uh, you could do if you wanted to, but you would need to use some heavier cable than what I have here. So we've got it hooked up with the um, positive going in to pin 6. We've got the 0 volt going into pin 7, so that's our DC in. And then the output uh, DC positive is coming from pin 1, and pin 8 is our DC ground. So I can now power this up. Uh, the voltage that we want to apply, it says 20 to 30 volts AC. But if we get our trusted calculator, if we go for the lower end of that, 20 times 1.4 to work out what the rectified DC voltage would be. That gives us 28 volts. We're going to lose a couple of volts in the um, regulator, but the actual supply voltage is not critical. So I've set it to 28 volts. Um, the higher you go, of course, the less current it's going to draw from your bench supply. So if you want to run it to full power, uh, you might want to increase that voltage a bit uh, and it will also be a bit easier on the supply as well. So I've got the multimeter connected across the output. We've got our um, bench supply set. We've got this set to uh, 10 ohms. I've got the Konkin KP184 electronic load connected to the output. Set of 10 ohms, constant resistance, so we'll switch this on, we should get around 5 volts on the output. So I'm going to turn the load on, 0 volts of course, it's not on yet, so we'll turn the power on and we're getting 5.2 volts. Might sound a bit high but at 10 ohms we're only drawing half an amp so it's very lightly loaded. Okay, so what I'll do now is increase the load on the supply, we're drawing just around half an amp at the moment, so it would normally supply much more than that. So I'll adjust the set point for the electronic load. I'm going to set it to 5 ohms. 
and we're now drawing an amp. You can see the voltage has dropped slightly. This droop on the regulator will diminish as you increase the load on it. It's just designed to supply much more current than this. Uh, so we'll go down still further. I'm going to turn it off. Um, now what you notice here is the voltage on the output has dropped down to a little over a volt. I'm going to turn the load back on, but notice it hasn't recovered. And this is a trap for young players, as Dave Jones would say. It looks like you've broken it. It looks like it's faulty. Um, what I'm going to do is turn the incoming power off. Notice the voltage on the output is dropping, but only very slowly, because it's got this huge capacitor, this 24,000 microfarad capacitor, charge up to 28 volts, so a lot of energy stored in this. And the fault, it's going to fault mode. It thought there was a fault on the supply because I'd turned the load off and it doesn't like that turn it saw that as a fault so it shut down the supply but it won't re-enable the supply until you power cycle it by power cycle what I mean is the output has got to drop to pretty much zero so in other words this capacitor has to discharge otherwise it will sit there and it'll look like it's a faulty supply so be aware of that if you're working on these and it appears that the, there's no output it's dead check the fault line there's a fault line if you look at the schematic there's a fault line in there and if it's going to fault mode, you need to fully power cycle it, wait until the output drops to zero. If you then turn it back on, make sure the load's on, otherwise you'll see it as a fault again. Turn it on and you should find it recovers. So be aware of that if you're working with these on the bench and it suddenly looks like you've broken it. You may have done, of course, but um, most likely it's gone into this fault mode and um, it's very easy to get fooled into thinking that the supply has failed. Okay, so now I'm going to reduce the resistance still further. We'll increase the load. And we're now up to 5 amps, so we're putting out 5 amps at 5 volts. You can see we're getting much closer to 5 volts now. And uh, we're drawing about an amp and a half from the bench supply. So quite a nice, efficient switching regulator. It's not even getting warm, it's still cold. Uh, so I'm going to increase the current up to around 10 amps. I'm going to turn this off. Notice this has dropped, so we'll need to power cycle that, otherwise uh, we'll have a problem. The reason I've turned this off, by the way, is these Cumpkins sometimes have a habit of overshooting um, the setting that you're trying to put into them and going to short circuit, and it puts a dead short across the, the load, which uh, obviously is not good for the supply. So we'll change that to 0.5 ohms. Turn that back on. But now I need to power cycle the supply. It looks like it's broken again, but I just need to power cycle it. We'll wait until this drops off to nothing. If you turn it off and back on straight away, because they'll still be charging this capacitor, it will just go back into the fault mode and it will look like it's still not working. So we'll try that. Might not be low enough, but we'll give it a go. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we're now up around 10 amps. Um, the voltage appears to have dropped quite a lot, but a lot of this will be in these leads. These leads are no longer really up to uh, passing 10 amps, so most of this droop will actually be in these uh, cables. If you want to test it at full load, you need to put all three cables in from the plus and 0 volt DC output. So 10 amps out, um, still under 3 amps going in. So we'll do a final test uh, up uh, around 0.4 ohms. So I'm going to turn the power off this time. This is the safest way of uh, changing the output is to turn the power, the DC power off first and it will shut the supply down and you won't end up with this fault condition. Okay, so I'm going to reduce this to 0.4 ohms, turn it back on, reapply the DC power and we're now up around 12 amps. So that's as high as I'm going to go with this. So 12 amps out, 3.4 amps DC going in of course, if you increase the DC voltage going in, the current supplied would drop. Uh, but you can see it's very nice um, supply. It's very predictable. Uh, as I say, just make sure that you turn the DC off before you turn the uh, load down. Uh, otherwise, you'll get this fault condition that you then need to clear by doing a full power cycle. So very easy to test on the bench. If you do get a fault, just take the two screws out that hold the um, capacitor in place, move it to one side, leave it connected uh, and then you can start fault finding around the board. It's quite a simple circuit. 
final check as I said is to reverse the input you wouldn't normally do this unless of course you're certain that there is a full bridge rectifier on the input we'll reapply the power and it should still work if it works one way around but not the other then you've got a faulty bridge rectifier which is this device here so it's all looking fine you can test the other one I'll do the same or something similar with the minus uh, 15 volt supply but uh, as you can see, very easy to test on the bench.